What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 11 of our Python 3 basics tutorial series where we have been learning to build a game of tic-tac-toe to pretty much just learn the basics of Python while actually doing something of interest. So, um, so where we left off we were determining the horizontal row uh, of winners and now we want to just do the vertical row uh, next, or vertical win basically. Uh, so it would really be column. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to comment out this section because I just, I, all I want, the only code I want right now is just for vertical win. Later we'll combine all of the win types of codes uh, into the same function. But for simplicity, we're just going to do, um, uh, do this. So here we have a, a uh, at least a game map. It didn't look very fair for player number one, but we have a game map where... Um, player two clearly won vertically. So how could we determine that player two has won or that somebody has won? Well, um, basically it would have to be everything in each row, every everything with the same index uh, would have to be the same number. So for example, for row in game, if we print row zero and we run that, uh, we can see it iterates over all the rows, prints the zeroth, you know, so like the first element in each row, you see two, 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 right? And then you could have some sort of check here that's just going to be like a list. And because like, remember, we you have a little check column or check functionality here that determines whether or not uh, someone has won. So we actually could use this exact same logic. So in fact, I'm going to copy it because I'm about to use it. Uh, and let's append row zero to check. So a list, unlike a tuple, a list you can continue building. So to add a value to the end of a list, we can use append. So you can say check.append, and then we're gonna append what? We're gonna just append the value that is row zero. So then, whoops, I just wanted to comment that out. Uh, then after we've done that, we could check, um, and we'll just tab this over. And instead of being row count, we're gonna do check. So if check dot count, check zero, and then check, and then check. Uh, and in fact, let me full screen this. I don't know why that was so small. Um, print winner. So now if we run that, we get winner. And then if we were to change this, hopefully back to a one, we would see, okay, there's no winner. Great. So obviously that's great, <laughs> um, but we've you know hard coded the check for row zero. So how could we go about checking all of them? Well, of course, we could do this, you know, this little snippet here. And by snippet, I mean not a snippet. And literally, actually, all the way up to here, and do it four times, or three times, rather, for uh, the zeroth index, the firsteth, and the second ith <laughs> index. Um, but obviously, as I've said before, that's really not ideal. We want this code to remain dynamic as possible. So, um, and yes, I am aware that, uh, well, there's two major things. One is the print of the 0, 1, 2 at the top of our game map that we've worked on before is not dynamic. We'll fix it, don't worry. And the game itself is not really changeable easily, but again, we'll fix it, don't worry. Anyways, we want to keep it as dynamic as possible. So, what could we do? Well, we could, um, I think I'm going to leave this here. I guess check can stay, but basically we would say, you know, we would need some number of columns and you could say zero, one, and two, oops, zero, one, two, and then, um, and then iterate, you know, for call in columns, um, and then run this, and then it would be row uh, call, and then the rest stays the same. So again, run it, winner, um, and then if we changed this, and then we did, I don't know, like this. Now, player one actually got an opportunity to play this time. Player one won, and we could comment this one out. Okay, no winner. Cool, so, so this logic clearly uh, is working, but again, we've got this is being hard-coded in, and we don't want that. So what could we do? Well... Um, this is, you know, it's three elements and it's just increment. It starts from zero and increments by one per each what 
Well, per each column that we have. And also, the since the game is square, you could say per row that we have as well. So if we were to get, say, the len, which is a built-in uh, function for Python, len of game, um, the answer to that is equal to three. Also, we could just have a counter. Like, you could literally uh, for call, and you could say for call um, in column. Uh, rather than that, you could say for call in, like, um, I was trying to think of a really good, really good way to get around it. But columns, basically, we could just say columns is, um, like if you just wanted to iterate 0, 1, 2, what, probably the best way is with a range. So again, range isn't something that we've talked about, but it's a built-in function in Python. So let me do built-in Python functions. Really? Built-in Python functions? 3.7 maybe? I'm surprised that wasn't like the top result. I must have typed it different than normal. Anyway, we can come down to range, and we can actually see that range, um, is it going to explain range? Huh. Anyway, okay, yeah, it does. Rather than being a function, range is actually an immutable sequence type, so it's actually not a function, but we treat it like a function, so it's okay. We all just, we it's, it's included in the built-in functions because we treat it like one, uh, but in the back end, it's actually not a function. It's a much, it's much more um, efficient. Um, and the reason why you'd want that is, in theory, you could do, um, you know, range of like a huge number, and that won't blow your memory. But if you were to do something uh, to convert it to a list, for example, and make that a list of that size, that will absolutely blow your memory. <laughs> So let me open up the command window real quick, and let's run pi dash three points, uh, not three six, three seven. I'm so used to typing uh, three six there. Uh, okay, and uh, let's just say um, x equals range three, and then like for i in x uh, print i, you get zero one two. Okay, so it just iterates over that and it's not quite a list it's a it's much more efficient than a list um and we'll see later that there's other operations that we can do on this that are similar operations to what we could do to a list um as well so anyways that's how i think we should go about it where basically this number three is just the len of the game so what we'll do is we'll come over here and so for rather than being for call in columns what we'll say is uh, for call in, um, and then we'll just do range len game. And then we can get rid of this silly columns, run it again. Okay, no winner. Let's add a winner here. Let's do this. Run it. Okay, we've got a winner, and then we can change that and go maybe to this one over here. Winner, cool. Nobody should win. Cool, nobody won. Okay, so... Um, I think that uh, the probably the next thing that we want to do is um, I think in the next video we'll do both. Of, hopefully we can do both of the diagonals. Um, I don't really think there's going to be I want to stuff that in, in this video. Um, anyways, so this will be our methodology for detecting vertical wins. Uh, and this should work at least from the oops, I didn't mean to click on that. This should work. Um, for any size game board, it's just going to run through all of the rows at those specific indexes. Um, and if there's a winner, cool, we print winner. And later we'll print winner to be a little more dynamic. Uh, say who won, uh, how did they win, and all that. Uh, so we will get to stuff like that. But for now, uh, I think I'll stop it here. And in the next tutorial, we are going to do the diagonals, which arguably is... Um, maybe the hardest, but um, shouldn't be too bad. So anyways, that's all for now. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.